welcome good morning um so i wanted to talk a little bit about like sort of it seems like there's a big phase change you know like we've been talking about this and i've been very i'm actually pretty excited about this it seems like there's a big sort of phase change in uh sushi swap and its product offerings that's sort of imminent um and you know uh i thought we could talk a little bit about you know how all the pieces fit together um and what people can just start building on it um sure. so you want to maybe talk about bento box and kashi and uh trident and how these pieces sort of are, are starting to come together yeah definitely so bento box is um uh kind of a brand name for something that we've built um and i i understand that these brand names can get confusing um I, i've actually had lots of feedback about that so bento box is we're going to call it an application vault yep. this is like you know kleenex versus a tissue yeah um and an application vault is a vault that allows you to deposit tokens um, and the underlying tokens get exercised in strategies and a there's an accounting mechanism on top that makes available a virtual balance for dApps so for instance um kashi uh, which is our lending protocol um uh, does isolated lending so when i deposit collateral or a lending token the literal underlying token is not made available other than as a virtual balance to the application. The literal underlying token, up to 80% of them, are taken and invested in yield strategies that go back to the user who ha is entitled to the share. And then um, when the application needs some of the actual underlying tokens, it's made available instantaneously. So I think a lot of uh, this design pattern is kind of been winked at a couple of times in different ways that people have designed it, just not at this scale. And okay, so, so let's let, let's yeah. let's talk about it. Okay, so I, I, I want to break the idea down because I've started to figure out and put all the pieces together. Um, and uh, but I think a lot of there's I, I think there, there's a lot of smart people who understand this already, but let's try and, and make it a little bit more approachable. Okay, so I have the bento box application vault. So in a bento box application vault, I put tokens in and they live in a strategy. Um, mm -hmm. And sort of one of the strategies inter interoperates with, uh, 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 with, with uh, Kashi, um, right? Um, no, so that that's the app. I would say there there are two sides to this. There's a strategy side, and there's the application side. Okay. So the strategy side is what happens to the underlying tokens, and the application side is maybe how tokens come in, and yeah. um, also how they can be interacted with. Okay. So I lend tokens on Kashi. They go mm -hmm. into a strategy, um, yep. and there are other applications living inside of bento box that can also pull, draw up on the liquidity that is inside of kashi for um uh for different use cases uh yes right um okay. and so kind of the idea is is that let's say that we have deployed our amm onto bento which is coming with trident and yep. we have let's say two billion dollars worth of eth we're never going to need to access at any particular moment that much ETH, right? $2 billion yeah. worth of ETH is quite a bit. Um, we'll probably only ever have swaps that are in the millions, like tens of millions maybe. And so in doing so, the um, underlying ETH up to 80%. So in this case, it would be like, uh, 1.6 billion would get taken and put into a strategy and then 400 million would then be made available for applications when they needed it so what what could a strategy be doing with these tokens for instance um our, our first one that we built is uh x sushi it just takes the sushi underlying and wraps the sushi into x sushi okay 
Um, X sushi is our yield bearing token that is also governance. So Got um, it. it's making like five percent APR. And so if you're holding sushi, you're not holding kind of this yield bearing asset. And so when you deposit it into bento box, it just behind the scenes is getting wrapped and turned into the um, X sushi up to 80%. So um, us, so a strategy is I would like to, I'm providing, I'm, I'm putting sushi into Kashi and it's getting wrapped into X sushi and also available to provide liquidity on the end. Yes. Perfect. That's fantastic. All right. Yeah. So that, so, you know, I think this is the, I think this is the sort of the, 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 maybe the biggest sort of misconception that like I figured out talking to you about sushi swap is everybody's like, Oh, it just seems like a sort of what like disparate combination of different applications. Um, uh, and maybe it is right now, but like the whole, whole vision and the, what's, 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 uh, what's imminent is the um is is this ability is the fact that these all these applications are actually sharing liquidity with each other right yeah um, they, they they will be definitely with the with the arrival of trident so trident yeah. will be our next generation amm that will be on bento box and that will be with kashi and so now kind of in the sense of uh fractionalization they'll be kind of sharing the responsibility of fractionalization for um, making um, making funds available when applications need them. So when, okay, so when you have, uh, when you, um, okay. So I guess the, the, the other piece right now is your, is, you know, I think the, the vision here is that you're trying to make a call to the community for more strategies, right? Um, yes. So like the strategy that you, uh, 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 that you, you outlined with, uh, uh, X sushi is, is sort of, you know, native to the, the sushi ecosystem. Um, mm -hmm. so let's, let, let's talk a little bit about, you know, maybe like sort of a, okay. So like, what, what, what's the process, um, for getting a new strategy into this, into this system? Um, I'm a user. I have an idea for generating yield. Um, how 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 do I um, how do I get that uh, get that bootstrapped into the into the the ecosystem? Sure. So um, we we have an X sushi strategy built. Um, we have also built an Ave and a compound strategy, which will just take tokens underlying and wrap them for that specific service. Yep. Um, we also have um, a Yearn one on the way, built by Yearn, um, that will just take the underlying tokens and put them into the individual Yearn vaults. Um, but uh, to uh, answer the question about um, b becoming a strategy, first I would say. Um, well, I don't know. Uh, maybe uh, it's a little. Maybe we should go a little bit deeper into this idea sure. of Yearn and Ave and compound strategies. Um, mm -hmm. so, okay. So the basic idea is, is that, okay. So like, and so I show up to, uh, uh, I should like, let's, let's imagine that Trident is fully released. So let's imagine that we're, you know, a few months from now and Trident is launched. Um, it is, it, 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 it is, it is out there in the world and so what my impression of what's happening is is that there would be um okay so uh what, what's what i don't know let's what, we let's just take eth for an example like i put eth into uh uh into kashi i'm lending uh i'm putting eth into kashi with the intention of sort of the desire to maximize yield um is the idea that there would be like a hybrid, uh, so like my some of that liquidity would then go into let's say um, a urine pool, and, and and some of that liquidity would be available on Trident. 
Um, let, let's let's maybe like back up. Um, okay. I think I think this would be this would be good. So without without Kashi or Trident, Bento still makes sense. Got it. Because and, and it works. Yeah. Right. So so my tokens come in, and what I get back is a share. Yep. And those share the, those share values get made available to the application on top. Um. Uh. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, all right. And so if I'm if I'm um, if I'm kind of like let's say that I'm depositing um, tokens to lend on Kashi and Kashi is a great example because like utilizations are pretty high. The unutilized balances, right, um, that I that I would be lending would then be taken and put into a strategy. Yeah. Um, and uh, as so long as the these tokens like the literal underlying tokens aren't coming out of the box um the vento box there's this um there's kind of this capability to float and that's how we get to put them into strategies um like uh, my favorite example is um just an analogy but like a bank right you go to like i deposit money in a bank and i go to the bank's website and i see a balance on the on the web page but they don't literally have maybe my money in a shoebox uh, put to the side. They have kind of the capability to return that money to me uh, essentially at any time yep. on the basis that the, some of it has gotten invested, some of it's in a vault, some of it has been lent for mortgages. Um, and so uh, it's like bento box is kind of the same thing. It's m more bento box is more like an accounting system that allows you to use strategies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so for for people who would want to build a strategy, you know, I would say that we're still working on better documentation, um, and we're learning that from working with Yearn. But yeah. uh, approach the team. Um, I think the first thing would be writing contracts. Um, those contracts need to be whitelisted onto Bento Box. And the strategies that we're targeting are low and no risk strategies, because there's really like potential damage here to be done across all the applications if there's a problem with a, a strategy. Okay. Um, like, what what is the what what kind of damage could be done? Oh, so like, uh, real it could be really bad. Um, assuming that an underlying strategy is not checked, like. It, it is is not a low no loss strategy you could go kind of fractional and what they have on top is a share representing the tokens underlying so um uh then then they would basically ha be entitled to less of what's underlying um because there would be less there so if there was a token loss this could be really bad really bad in the sense that the shares of that bento box strategy would no longer would be worth less than the collateral that was originally put in. Like exactly. Essentially, losses get socialized across the strategy. Yep. Got it. Yeah. And okay. so. Well, I don't under I actually don't understand why that's catastrophic. Um, I mean, it, it's I just say it's just not good, right? To go kind of like fractional reserve on something. Um. And so we're just like ultra conservative about low and no loss strategies um, and and ultra conservative about checking the code base that will uh, make its way into uh, yeah, absolutely. as bento box strategies. That makes a lot um, of kind sense. Of, kind of like the way that maybe Aave or Compound, um, where they, they definitely need to have um, uh, the capability to liquidate a token quickly yeah. um otherwise they can kind of run the whole system fractional we kind of are conservative in that in that same way that's fascinating um interesting so do you think i mean without a doubt being conservative like that is going to sort of limit the uh the 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 number of new strategies that sort of come into um, come into the bento box world, but 
uh, it does mean that you're going to have this like um, sort of more complex, like you're going to be able to hide some of the complexity of liquidity management um, from the user behind these bento box strategies. Yeah, 100%. And, yeah. and that's, that's kind of the goal. And like, right now, it's just, you know, um, well, the, the real the real motivation will be when we do a migration from our AMM now into our next AMM. Yep. And we bring and we bring four billion dollars from there into Trident. Um, and there's a lot of motivation when there's a lot more capital, especially when there are um, strategists can do this two and twenty model. Tell me about the two and twenty model. So Yearn uh, pioneered this. It was uh two percent of the underlying deposit with um uh 20 percent performance fee um and the way that they did this is in, in a really beautiful way um is let's say that i have a hundred dollars or a hundred usdc um and i deposit that into yearn y usdc mm -hmm. and then i remove it i don't have um, I don't have 98 USDC. I have 100 USDC. Um, if it's just kind of like I deposit and remove, it's they yep. take a two percent of principal and 20 percent performance fee um, only when they've actually provided that to you. And so it's kind of like some like accounting mechanism that makes sure that you have gotten up to two percent, and then after what you've gained, they take a 20 percent performance fee. Yep. Yeah. So essentially, I mean, th this this gets to what what you were calling sort of um, fractional, like avoiding going fractional reserve, i.e., that you that you are that there are like you are taking two and twenty, um, but it's it's essentially from profit. Yes, and that that would be like for the strategists who implement right. There, we're going to make that available to you. Um, as a strategist for, you know, investing bento box. And so where a lot of these, um, where you kind of have to uh, be smart and kind of chase these different yields, um, bento box will essentially make that available for you, like just by being inside of bento box. Fantastic. I think that, you know, having that much capital is, is, um, I mean, I, I think it sort of does ask sort of, it's an interesting question. Like, how do you think of the differentiation between, um, I mean, it, there, there are a couple of levels of this, right? So like in the, you know, in the sense of like the urine strategy, urine is also taking their two and 20. So I like observe that, you know, Bento Box sort of has like a fund of funds, like uh, uh, property there uh, where, you've got uh, where, where you have uh, sort of urine strategy fees on top of, or, or bento boxes strategy fees on top of urine strategy fees. Um, and, but like ideally, but you get the, uh, the other sushi swap apps that are integrated into, uh, into, uh, into, uh, into uh, this as a, into bento box as a, as a profit source as well. So that makes sense. It, it makes logical sense. It's just sort well, of interesting. So it in this particular instance with urine, um, they're just doing the integration. There's no additional like fee, but like um, maybe new strategies or something in addition that doesn't already have a fee built in, you can also build in a fee. Yep. That makes logical sense. Um, cool. Um, so what are, what are, what are other pieces of this emerging tech stack that you are, uh, uh, are excited for people to get involved in? Um, that that one's, uh, Bento Box is a big one. Um, also our coming Trident um, AMM uh, is uh, going to have this capability that you can build your own pools. So you can, there's this um, iPool interface um, and the iPool interface is just in a standard um, uh, Solidity application interface. And it allows you to design pools um, that in, in, a, in such a way that you would like, 
right? Say for instance that I am uh, I'm ample fourth, and since I'm a rebasing token, I need um, a method, or I need to design a pool that each time a rebase happens, uh, I need to account, uh, update the pool in accounting for that rebase method, or the, yeah. those rebase token balances. <clears throat> I can um, implement my own pool design to accommodate something like that. Oh, fantastic! Well, I mean, I think that's really that's that's that that does um, work around a pain point um, that, uh, that the rebasing tokens are are, are experiencing with the uh, existing AMMs, right? Mm -hmm. But like, just just not that it can kind of like expand to say. Um, I think that um, I, I like. Let's say that I'm Rai. Um, this is the Reflexor Labs Rai. Um, yep. They they have uh, a stable price, but their price is not stable against a particular asset. It's stable in the sense of like um, a control loop stability. It's volatility um, dampened. Right. Perfect. The, 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 um, and maybe I want to trade against Dai but a stable swap curve does not make sense for me. I want something uh, more complicated with low slippage. I can design something like that. Interesting. So that, I mean, it, that, that's sort of, okay, so help me imagine this. So I have an iPool interface that allows the creation of Sort of custom, fully customized, fully programmed, uh, uh, able pools. Um, the uh, the so I, I have this interface, um, and presumably Trident will come with some sort of out of the box pool uh, pools that can be created. Um, sure. The question, I guess, sort of interesting question. Then it's like, what is the I'm sort of trying to get at this thing, which is like, in a world of the where where you're where people are building sort of custom pools to the Trident interface, I guess the the um, I guess that's a stupid question. <laughs> um, I, I I'm just sort of thinking through the implications of of uh, of of, of, uh, of sort of having sort of custom curves and custom uh, and custom pools. Um, in the in the design of Trident, it's it's interesting. Um, but so I assume the the I, the iPool interface though sort of sort of does require like a a, a liquidity share to sort of uh, from different iPool interfaces to look pretty pretty similar to each other. Like could you can you accommodate something as different as like Uniswap V3 style non fungible liquidity positions, um, or is or like what's what's the what's the limits of this abstraction? Yeah, um, we we definitely support that. Um, we've built our own uh, version of concentrated liquidity. Um, we have a stable swap um, uh, pool that allows you to um, user configurable uh, in between two and thirty two assets. <clears throat> We have weighted pools and we have their, these traditional constant product pools. Yep. Um, so and so, the, but like the liquidity shares of some of those things will look different. Will will we'll have very different behavior than. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So like it's it's pretty uh, generic, especially like even in the swap interface, right? It's like, or I'm sorry, in in the like add liquidity interface, it's much like, kind of like a. A method that uh, accepts call data, right? Got it. Um, and and not necessarily um, specific parameters. Some of those we had to kind of be, um, we had to be to to keep it generic. We had to be like pretty liberal with like what what um, inputs it would accept. Got it. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I think it's interesting. Like what the. Uh, I, I, like I said, I think this is a very like it's very ambitious, right? It's very ambitious to try and and try and make um, 
uh, an AMM have a generic interface um, like this, both on the LP side. Um, I guess having it, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, AMM swap interfaces all pretty much look pretty, pretty much pretty similar to each other, and are like, uh, are, 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 you know, if if someone is building a, an aggregator that uh, is going to accept all of the different Trident pools, um, they'll probably have like the swap interface will probably all work pretty similar to each other. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and so. Um, the other thing that we'll do is we'll integrate it into our router. Um, and we built this like new router called Tynes. Um, and Tynes kind of takes and evaluates prices across these different pools, price impacts, um, gas, uh, you know, the uh, graph topology, and then uses that to assist in routing uh the order through these different pools like i think the um i think that we'll find you'll find that like kind of majors like blue chips are really good at concentrated liquidity um uh like these uh, okay i i want to yeah. wait i didn't i don't understand the times idea can you explain it again? <laughs> yeah sure so so if i i have all these different types of pools um then I have to kind of, uh, I can't really do the same style routing that I did before where it's like, I have one type of pool, uh, hop, you know, or multi hop. Okay. To get the, the most effective liquidity. Um, I have now this capability to start with different routes, um, like R O O T S. Right. Yeah. Um, and swap, maybe, um, balance the swap in between two pools. So for instance, let's say I have a concentrated liquidity position for USDT and USDC that produces the best price, um, but only to a, a, a particular limit, right? Once you kind of like trade outside the top range of concentrated liquidity, you um, uh, once you like trade out of that top range, you uh, start to, you, you basically can't make a swap anymore um, and so I have to balance that um, with something else in the AMM to complete the trade or to get the best price. And so maybe there's a stable swap pool for USDC, USDT, and I balance the trade maybe, um, you know, 70% in this uh, concentrated liquidity and 30% uh, through that. And that's what Tynes is going to be able to do. It's going to be able to do multi-route but it's also going to be multi hop. Got it. That makes logical sense. Which is, you know, a little bit of like the kind of the role aggregators play. Though, I guess the only thing that I get, like the thing that I'm most familiar off the top of my head that does something like this is like, um, like cow swap right now, where it like, where it tries to, you know, solve, an order across multiple AMMs. Um, yeah, um, I think one inch is analogous, like their routing engine as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we just haven't had this problem at AMMs because AMMs have always been like, I have you know this pool A type, and so I'm going to route through my all my pool A's. Cool. Makes sense. Um, yeah. So you know, from uh, from the sommelier point of view, you know, I, I do want to see whether or not we can develop stuff that will fit into the sort of constraints of uh, uh, bento box strategies as they evolve. Um, but and so that's why I've been really excited to learn about all of this stuff. Um, I'm trying to think about uh, uh, anything else, or otherwise, I can see whether or not we I can get any questions from uh, from the team or from from the group. Um, sure. Um, cool.
any questions from the audience uh, i will i should be able to see them up in the uh, if you ask questions in the periscope Okay, so times, bento box strategies, and um, times, bento box strategies, Kashi Wending, these are the sort of integrated components of, of, of sort of the new sushi swap. Um, So I, I've 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 uh, I've seen you commenting on Twitter that uh, uh, a bunch of these pieces are in audit right now. So, sort of, what's the software development process? What can people expect? Uh, 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 the software, you know, the the next stages of this of the system being developed. Yeah. So we're going through audit, um, and uh, we actually have had. Um, so we have a couple of first. First, we develop, and um, and while we're developing, and this is like this this is already elapsed. While we're developing, we do formal verification of the contracts okay. um, using Sertora's um, software suite, as well as some of Sertora's team. Got it. Um, and that uh, has gone really well. Um, I think better guidance from we we hired um, Moody uh, Gupta. Um, and he is um, uh, he 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 kind of like comes from an auditing background. I think that he's more particular about auditing, and that formal verification basically only guarantees you coverage, in the same way that tests guarantee you coverage. Um, and so uh, he he likes to see audits. So um, we have uh, audits lined up with Halborn, yeah. um, uh, Open Zeppelin. Um, we have our formal verification. We're going to do um, uh, one of these C4 code contests. This is like Code Arena runs a uh, yeah. audit. You know, we're going to do three weeks of that. Um, we have um, a couple different auditors giving us um, informal reviews. Um, and we're kind of reaching out to a few more to get just because, you know, we're going to migrate a bunch of money into here. Um, and yeah. it would be really disastrous if we did that. Um, when you're bootstrapping, like maybe sushi in the beginning, it's like, it's not as serious because you're, you know, there's not much at risk. And so you can kind of like get by and kind of use time to audit those contracts. Yeah. Um, but for this one in particular, it's a, a huge deal. And so we want to be, very yeah. uh, secure in our um, in our like deployment. So, I I think this uh, 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 creates like a yeah I think you know the nature of doing that creates a lot of uncertainty about like when when you're actually gonna when 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 things are actually gonna be ready right if you've got multiple parallel lines of auditors um, in general you know it, it, it it's it's sort of ready when it's ready right. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're going to definitely have at least a month here of, of audits, yeah. um, uh, maybe more. Um, and so we, we're we going to go to Polygon first um, as and not run our migration script. We have like a migration script that will take you from um, our, our uh, um, MasterChef contracts and you can migrate from that into a new like token. Yep. Yeah, so we're gonna run those um, and move. Well, we're not gonna run those on Polygon. We're gonna wait until like all the audits um, come back, um, but we're gonna kind of like run some test deployments on Polygon to kind of check out and see how everything is operating. Then when we're, we've are we kind of like given the go ahead, I think we'll do a migration um, from our uh, legacy AMM into um, Trident. Yeah, I'm. I'm really excited to start learning, like polygon development. It's been coming up a lot in the, uh, in the gravity community. Um, like, oh, uh, there, there's a, there's an ongoing uh, C4 
uh, uh, audit of the sort of gravity software stack right now um, going on. And it's actually been interesting, like, like this mechanism just sort of came to my attention very recently as a, as a, as a way of getting code, uh, uh, code looked at. Um, and it's sort of interesting that it seems to like have reached it. I, it's been interesting to see like how the, um, like the general, the like where communities are forming in the security space um, now. Um, because I do think that like, we sort of have come up against like a lot of talent limits. Um, uh, I don't know how much you've been feeling this, but I've definitely been feeling this like- Totally, where, yes. Where we kind of have like, we like bumped up against the edge of the talent and like auditors only have so much, have, have, have only so much talent pool a lot of projects have pulled security in house. Um, and it's sort of interesting to find like that there are potentially new, like new sources uh, of, uh, of security people in these communities that are forming um, around some stuff like C4. Um, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. And I, I'd say like for the incentives are all messed up, right? Um, like to work at a tier one auditing firm, you basically have to be um one of like maybe a hundred people on earth uh, that are good at this good at solidity um yeah. understand it this deeply and you have to sit and watch people who are basically intermediate um become uh you know you know 10 you know make 10 figures or 11 figures while you're kind of like the person that gets paid you know a, a salary right it's yeah. so it's really difficult to retain talent um, uh, like that. Um, and so I think maybe code contests might be the answer, right? So for instance, like we we audited MISO, we, we got two audits and a formal verification. Um, and we still had a, a bug that could have uh, lost like a catastrophic amount of funds. And for that, um, we have kind of a, a, a bug bounty with Immunify who helped us out. Yep. Um, and this is, uh, we have basically 10% of vulnerable funds up to a million dollars. Like that's our cap. And we yep. just made a million dollar payment to Samsung. Right? Yep. yep. I, and I think you guys handled that really well. Um, it's, uh, it seemed like a, like on all sides, like it seemed like a good, uh, a good resolution, but yeah. I mean, this is this is the um, you know this is this is the question. Is like, can we can you provide enough incentive um, for people who are working at um, you know? It's like you and the auditor mindset is like is something that has to be trained, right? I, I think the biggest, I, I think a little bit of the biggest challenge is like I do think the builder mindset and the auditor mindset are like two completely different like mental modes. Um, it's like hard and like people, at least for me, at least I have, I have a hard time like going back and forth between them. Um, um, because like the builder mindset is a very, is like a very much a, 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 a creative flow. And it's like about like imagining what, like the code could be doing um, and like how it could change and evolve. Um, and the auditor mindset is like looking at the code as like the static object and be like, Okay, how can I break? How 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 can I get it to misbehave? Um, and I wonder, you know, I think it's interesting. I also, you know, I think it's interesting trying to. It's always a, a challenge trying to coexist these in like a development process. Uh, you know, and I, yeah, I've I've I found that to be extremely challenging. Um, I do think that like you know, aud I I do also think of auditing as very much like the end of the process. Um, uh, and it, it seems like, you know, like things like the MISO, it's like, you know, incidents should, you know, ideally like they sort of, you know, it's not just about like, oh, we had an incident, like we resolved it and we paid out our bounty. It's like, what does that incident tell you about what are the gaps in the upstream software development process and how do you build? Um, is I think the, is the, is the other challenge. Um, the major thing that people aren't acknowledging with the audit process, and this started kind of with DeFi summer, was like one thing that people just won't say is that there that there are two tiers of auditors. There are the tier one auditors 
that are super high quality and there's the rubber stamp auditor and like um people kind of like complain to like especially with urine they're like why didn't you get this audited it's like at like <clears throat> at this at the speed they're building like urine can't materialize auditors to um to audit their code and then they're kind of like you point at some of these other auditors say well you know they're available well they're they're tier two auditors and like you're not getting anything more than a rubber stamp from them um and so when whenever like it's kind of like this like um i say like plausible deniability for the community to be like you you know you didn't get an audit it's like yeah but like really it wouldn't have it wouldn't have it wouldn't have saved you at all if I got an audit from like, you know, Jim Bob's like audit shop, right? Like uh, all I would get is kind of like plausibility, plausible deniability for my end um, in the event that there is a problem. I can go, well, look, I got an audit, you know, and that, that, that rubber stamp costs, you know, in between 40 and a hundred grand. Yep. So if, if I'm, Andre and I'm not being fairly compensated for my work. Um, I'm going, I'm going to write contracts and I'm going to, I'm going to test in prod and you can take the risk or you cannot. Right. Like, and I think that that was like an appropriate solution that has been kind of like downplayed as, as, um, as like, like, uh, you know, like super risk on, but I mean, they, they really didn't have any other choice. Many, many teams don't have the same choice. Yeah, no, I think you have a couple of things, right? It's like, you know, we, I think like in general, like the, 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 like this is, you know, these are, these are the, uh, 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 these are the incredible pressures that we're all under, right? We're under incredible pressure to innovate. Um, like there's still so much left. There's there's still just so much left to build. We're under incredible pressure to innovate, um, and like everything is becoming more complex. Just and like we're like ramping up the complexity of of the blockchain ecosystem rapidly. Um, the process, you know, uh, uh, tier tier like uh, uh, like tier one audit firms, like they have tried to invest in, you know, various kinds of tooling and fuzzing and static analysis tools. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's especially in this era, they're just like very constrained by, um, by access to uh, talent, right? Like access to talent really uh, is the thing. And we just like, don't mat you don't magically produce another SAM, right? Um, uh, you don't, you don't magically, these people don't like, just like fall out of the woodwork. Um, and so that, 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 that's an, that's, that's another piece. Um, and so, yes, um, I think that like, we have this in, um, we, we are all, everybody in this, in this space is like really, is, is, is definitely really struggling with this, um, with, with trying to find these balances. Um, yeah, no, uh, and you know. Uh, the stress of also doing incident response, I think, is the is is the uh, uh, is the uh, is the um, is the other piece, right? I'm sure, like I, I know in my life, you know, for for every like you know serious incident, there are also like probably 10x more false positives where somebody comes to you and is like, "Oh, I think I found something really bad," and then you're like, "Okay, we looked at it, and it's not really that bad." <laughs> Yep. Yep. We get a lot of those. Yep. But, um, but you, you have to pull the fire alarm, uh, just to an extent on every incident. Um, and like, you know, and, and that's another big, uh, it's a, it is just like another big sort of under recognized ongoing cost of like running these systems, um, is, is, and the, and like the sort of continuous stress of, uh, of doing, uh, incident response, like, you know, I've been done with doing incident response on like Cosmos stuff for like three years now. And it's like, and I like, I don't see an end to it. Um, mm. like I, don't, I don't actually like, I, I I'm pretty sure like, even if I completely like disassociated with my pro the project and sold all my tokens, I'm pretty sure people would still, uh, uh, I would still get paged when they're, when, when people are trying to triage. Me. Um, yeah. 
This is like a, like, I only see the, the only reasonable response I see to this are insurance funds long term is like, you cannot make bulletproof code. Um, but like, we, that's like, that's a risk that we can um, commoditize and sell. Yep. Um, somebody asked about the paradigm, um, their, uh, per, their, per, um, their flirt, right? The, the yeah, yeah, we talked about perpetual, the, the NFT madness. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't like, I, I guess I didn't understand it. Um, the, so I, I saw it at first and I messaged David white. I was like, I think that this assumes like kind of uniformity of the underlying NFT. And then also um, the same thing that most of these NFT platforms suffer from, which is a uh, basically a race condition in the end where some NFTs are valuable. Um, some uh, like some NFTs are more valuable than others. Um, and kind of people who are exiting cherry pick those particular ones, um, which kind of like drives value like down further. Um, and he says that that that's not true. He thinks that um, maybe I'm kind of having a mental model similar to NFTX. Um, so I, I guess I don't, I don't understand it so far. Um, and I still need to kind of like read more about it. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I sort of glanced at it too. Um, like it seemed like it was basically just, um, It's fascinating watching this like sort of market evolve. It's also been kind of annoying the effect of it has had on ETH gas prices. Um, but the uh, uh, the this like um, it's it it is it, it is interesting to me that we're gonna. It seems like we're gonna have um, a trading like we are setting the stages for a trading ecosystem around nfts that are just that is just as rich and varied as um the uh fungible token trading ecosystem um and so that that's that's sort of just generally my take on 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 the uh, uh on the on the on on this research is um that we're gonna see just in a uh yep i i say myself i've been like looking at the like kind of analyzing NFTs from every different angle, trading, um, you know, um, like tranching, um, like, like fractionalization in a bunch of different ways, lending. And these things are just a nightmare to deal with. There is, there is almost zero, like somebody's going to come along and they're going to invent, you know, the AMM of NFTs, right? They're the, I, I say that like tongue in cheek, but like, you know, kind of for forever, everybody was doing this like zero X or air swap model where it's kind of like yeah. this like OTC trade. And then, you know, Uniswap comes along and is like, bam, uh, an AMM, isn't this cool? And it solved like so many problems that had, that had come from like, you know, these like uh, primitive like DEXs there were like thin liquidity and um, you know uh, like 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 poor mechanism design um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, and like somebody's going to do that with NFTs I'm sure of it um, but just right now every time I kind of like <clears throat> try and approach this problem the um, the non fungibility uh, creates so many individual problems and then the um, kind of like illiquidity of them naturally and the high diversity of assets is just it's i mean it's really problematic if we look to like traditional markets we have to look at um other non-fungibles like um mortgages right like that's probably yep. the closest thing um but <clears throat> um in DeFi, we kind of like need this capability to liquidate um where mortgages um, like these MBSs don't necessarily have that. They have this, like, you know, it's like, we'll continue to keep the mortgage until you don't make funding essentially. Um, yep. whereas like for NFTs, it's slightly different. If somebody perceives that the value has dropped below what their initial loan value is, they're going to like default. Yep. 
Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I, I, that, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, the analogies that you're, so I think that like, well, like, you know, the, the cycle of this is like, it's similar, right? Is it's like, you know, we had the, you know, how, how did we get here with fungible tokens, right? We got here with fungible tokens because we had the 2017 ICO boom, which led to like a lot of different assets being created, most of which went to zero, but like, um, uh, you know, a number of them stuck around um, and that created like something that people could build lending markets on top of and all of these other primitive, uh, you know, AMMs, lending markets, all of this stuff. Like, I think we're seeing the same cycle play out in um, in, in NFTs, right? We're, we're right now in this like sort of massive asset creation phase. Um, and that's that lays the groundwork for, for, for everything else. But you're, you're right about how hairy the problems are to solve. Um, because, you know, it, it is it is less easy to guarantee, for instance, um, even among like sort of a, a blue chip set um, that, for instance, like liquidations will be possible. Right. I mean, we basically need we basically need bids on them. Um, yes. And to, so to have bids on them, we have to kind of create some sort of highly liquid market or some sort of mechanism that allows us to have a highly liquid market. And then we can price them to do stuff like lending. I think that that's probably the first problem to solve. Um, yep. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, so this has been a great conversation. Uh, and uh, thank you for your time, Joseph. Likewise. I really enjoyed it. Great. I learned a lot. Same. Cool. All right. Uh, terminate the broadcast.